my time to market is quite shit. And that's unfortunate because a lot of people consider time to market for indie hackers to be pretty much the most important metric to look at. Why I'm saying that my time to market is quite shit is because in last August, I wanted to create, or I had the idea of creating my own little application. And I still haven't been able to do it. And I want to change that. That's my cat. I want to change that. The goal is now to create the app from scratch and finish it within the next 24 hours. Now you might ask, how is this guy going to create an app in just one day that he couldn't finish in six months? The answer is that I'm going to try to utilize AI as much as possible. There's no other way for me to achieve this given my very limited background in mobile development. I mean, this is the first app I'm ever creating. The whole point of the video is to challenge myself and just get it done instead of going through more and more tutorials to learn how to properly write Swift code. The second question you might be having is, what kind of app do you actually want to build? And the app is a daily photo journal. Every day you create one memory, add in how you're feeling that day and any other thoughts you're having. It's pretty much like a private be real for collecting your memories. And before today, I haven't really thought about exactly all the features. So what I'm doing here at the beginning is just to draw up a general wireframe of the application so that I then have a blueprint of what I want to build. When I was done with the wireframing, I created an app icon using Mid Journey. I gave it a prompt which said what the app was about, told that I wanted a green color theme, and then got this output right here. Honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I was going to say I don't really love the car, but I'm naming the app Memory Lane, so it obviously makes sense to have something like that. And I really like the bottom left one. And I ended up using a variation of that one. As I said, I really liked it, but I would have wanted to adjust it a little bit. However, I quickly realized that there's still some limits as to what AI, or in this case, mid journey can do for you. If I could, I mean, there's probably a way, but if I could make this, like the, the image of this on the photo book from this, that would be, Incredible. I mean, I could ask a designer, <laughs> they would be able to do it. But no time and no budget. So instead I used the already created icon and went on to the next big thing that I'm always struggling with, design. How should the different parts of my application actually look? And I tried a variation of AI tools, but none of them really hit the spot. Without at least some basic background in how to design a page and a user interface, it's still very difficult, at least for me, to create nicely looking applications, even with the help of a bunch of AI tools. So what I ended up with here at the end was just a collection of different kinds of designs that Midjourney created for me that I found sort of cool and which I wanted to then pick different pieces of to then create my own application. Finally getting to the stage of working code. So right now what I asked ChatGPT to do is just give me um, an easy start, basically. Just some, some code that I can start my application with. <laughs> That's already crazy. I just post, pasted that in. I just... Now what you see there on the screen is a welcome screen that is completely AI generated. So I just told ChatGPT what I wanted, pasted the code in. But I did want to make some changes to it. I adjusted the buttons a little bit. I played around with the font and I added a background image that was also generated using AI, in this case, Mid Journey. After being done with the welcome screen, I moved on to a way more difficult part of the application. I wanted to create the screen on which you could add how you feel that day. For that, we needed the ability to upload a photo or pick from your library, a slider for your mood and a text field where you can put in additional comments. So what I do, what I want to do right now is either let you choose an image from your library or make a new one. And this is the first time when I'm, when I'm genuinely lost at the code that's being created here. And that is a genuine problem. When you don't understand your code and it works, some people tend to let it slide. But when it doesn't work, you get into trouble because it's almost impossible to debug. In this case though, I also had to consider the fact of time. 
And this I always found super confusing anyway with like <clears throat> what the what the coordinator is and stuff like that. Now the question is here in this case because I want to build it in one day, right? I'm just going to use it. But if, you know, this was a bigger project and stuff, you shouldn't do what I do, which is basically just copy and paste at this stage. However, in this moment, we're already over five hours into the app building and everything I had to show for it so far was the welcome screen and a nav bar. So I needed to press on and that meant I took code from ChatGPT even when it didn't make perfect sense to me. But now that the code was more logic than UI based, it started getting a lot harder. Sometimes it even seemed like using AI here made my job more difficult compared to just Googling exactly what I wanted. It's now almost 5 p.m. and I'm severely struggling with this. Basically my problem is that I'm very bad when it comes to like creating visuals and stuff. And I'm try I was trying to do this with Midjourney, but Midjourney doesn't really help that much with this. So I, there's still some aspects that I have to do on my own, but I have so many other small features that I want to implement that I'm just gonna continue building because the design I can change after, right? I will now focus mainly on just getting the app to do what I want it to do, which is mainly how do I store the memories a user puts in and how do I make all that data accessible for all the screens of my app. Now, because I'm quite slow here, I will do everything locally for now. So if you download the app, your images will never leave your phone. They will just, they should stay there in storage. Now I do know how I would do all this in JavaScript or for a website, um, but I do want to figure out how I'm doing it here. I mean, on a website, actually, I would have to use some kind of authentication stuff. So this is nice. Um, but the great thing now with ChatGPT is that I can just say like, hey, this is what I would do in JavaScript. Now, can you tell me how I should do this best on an iPhone? Unfortunately, it really couldn't help me with that. This was probably the most frustrating part of the project. Whereas before I could sort of do a mix of coding myself and asking ChatGPT for help, here, I ended up just copying what ChatGPT gave me, getting an error, feeding that error back to ChatGPT, and just ending up in that whole loop without really making any progress. This also meant that I was sending lots of requests, which led me to being blocked for a while since I reached the usage cap. I honestly was just thinking like, hey, this is not really fun anymore, or this is not really what I love about coding, right? Like a big part of coding for me is having these uninterrupted times of just pure concentration where you try to figure something out and you problem solve your way through it. So I have to say I'm not enjoying the building process as much right now as if I would build it on my own. On the other hand, I would never be able to build this on my own. Getting blocked though ended up being a blessing in disguise. It made me think through the whole process myself and I also realized I've done something similar before during a course project. So I ended up writing the function that could save and get data from local storage myself. It took quite a while, but I was able to get there bit by bit, just because I finally understood the code again that I was writing. At like 8 p.m. I was close to finally getting it done, but you could also see my brain starting to get tired, showing all the signs of fatigue after working on this app the whole day. It's now 8 p.m. I've worked on this, I think, almost eight hours, but I do think I'm getting there. Uh, I think I think I should speed up, but also, uh, you know, I ought to speed. Not not like I should. <laughs> what I'm saying is, oh, I might have a beer as well. If I get if I get the whole data storage thing to work, all the other views should actually be very simple, and I'm quite I'm quite close there. I think now. Ah, nah. Well, let's see. Let's see. We have the start screen, that means everything is reset. If I click on get started, I have zero memories. That's cool. Now, if I start this, let's see whether this actually still works. Perfect. And it also says today I'm feeling like a five. So there's, this is a default starting value. So <clears throat> unless I add a photo, nothing should be saved. So if I update this here, it says no image available, not saving. If I go to home, it tells me number of memories saved is zero. If I add a photo and I take that from the library, and I'll go and take this one here, the waterfall. And I now didn't want that. 
and then I'll change it to seven, it should save it. If I go to home, it should tell me number of memories saved is seven. If I close it and I rebuild it, now if this still shows me seven and the waterfall image, we're in a really good place. Fuck. Like I said, it was a difficult process, but I was getting there bit by bit. Should be one now. Fuck. Oh. Man, it's almost nine. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Zero memory saved. Add a photo. I'll do something other than the waterfall now. Let's let's do this. I don't even know. Whatever planned. Seven has been saved. Has only been saved once. That is a good sign. Now let's look at this again. Seven. I, I put it to seven and I put it. I put I put a planned. Put a plan there. Let's see a plan and let's see a seven. Did I put seven or did I put eight? Yeah, so luckily I just misremembered here, which meant that the core functionality finally worked. I'm able to create, update and retrieve memories from local storage, which now meant that I could build the next screen, which would display all of the past memories in a neat timeline. Since I now knew how to get the data from local storage, I just needed to figure out how to display it, which is one of the things ChatGPT does incredibly well. Wow. Wow. Okay. This was crazy. And this was also how I actually imagined ChatGPT to work the whole time. Like honestly, the last few hours were, were really frustrating, but this sort of stuff here, boom. So the overview screen was almost done, but I did want to make a few small design changes and add another subpage so that you could tap on a memory and it would open a new page with more information of that given day. Home stretch. Fucking home stretch. I'm so tired. Now the final screen that I wanted to do is a home screen where I just want to show today's memory if it has been created already. If it hasn't, I just want to show a button that prompts the user to create a new memory for today. Additionally, I also want to show a random memory of the past, so I have to dig through all the creative memories and select one to randomly display. By this stage, I also noticed that I got better at using Swift on my own, even though the process with going back and forth between ChatGPT and my code editor often felt frustrating and like I often wasn't understanding at all what was going on, I realized I had learned quite a lot throughout the day. At stages, I even found that ChatGPT slowed me down a little bit, while other times it sped me up by a factor of what felt like a hundred. Overall, I'd say it's an incredibly useful tool, but it's a lot more powerful when you actually know what you're doing. When you know exactly what you're looking for, when you're able to keep ChatGPT from going down the wrong rabbit hole, you can easily speed up your development time by an insane amount. Even for me, whose background in Swift was literally just about two courses like half a year ago, I was able to finish the project here with an MVP that I'm honestly quite proud of, even though there's still a few bugs and it lacks some of the functionality that I envisioned. I'd still say it wouldn't have been possible without the courses I've been doing in the past because there's no way I would have been able to figure out with ChatGPT how to store and retrieve data. So at this point as well, if you're trying to learn Swift UI and native mobile development, definitely check out Paul Hudson's course, 100 Days of Hacking with Swift. It's an incredibly thought out resource, project based and the best of all, completely free. I think I spent now 12 hours on this just today. It's almost 2 p.m. Sorry, 2 a.m. I'm tired. I'm blocked by ChatGPT. I feel like I feel like I've given it my all. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna put the app on my phone. There's a lot of stuff to improve, but I'm actually really, really happy to have done this. That's my cat. <laughs> All right. There we go. Oh my God. So this is, 
you see it as well. It's two, two a.m. Nine minutes. But this is what I was working on. And I, honestly, I think it doesn't look bad. Like the welcome screen looks really nice. Um, I'm gonna click on how does it work. Welcome to Memory Lane, a mindful app that lets you capture one special moment every day. This was written by ChatGPT. I was I was not able to do that myself anymore. That was like 30 minutes ago. Okay, if I click on get started, hopefully we'll enter the main app. There we go. 5th of April, 2023. I haven't created a memory today. So now I clicked on, I would like to create an app, uh, a memory, sorry. And it tells me you have to add a photo. So if I click on create a memory, add a photo, and I'm gonna take a photo. Okay, nice, that works. That's the cat. That's my memory for today. I'm gonna use the photo. And that worked. That fucking worked. And I'm feeling like a f I'm feeling like a 10. And now let me type something in here and say this app actually works. And the, the performance that looked so bad <laughs> that looked so bad on the simulator is exactly as bad in the application. It's um it's very slow. So I have to definitely, that's one of the things I definitely have to change, uh, definitely have to change. This app actually works. And I also, I can't get out of here. Okay, I can't, I can't get out. <laughs> but let me close this and just open it again. Boom, remember, this happened zero days ago, but it all works. It all works, that's really cool, and I can click on it. I cannot click on it, but here I can click on it. Okay. One day's of work, okay? One day of work, but I'm really happy. This is the first time I actually created an app like this. I'm happy with it, I'm done with it, at least for this video, and all of the rest of it I'll just do whenever I get the time.